Anyway, to start this over again, I just want to talk to give you a brief history of the geology and geography and uh, the birds species comparison. Uh, and I took some comparisons with uh, Africa and South America with uh, a couple, three different families. And then there's a couple examples of evolutionary convergence. And then a few mammals at the end. Um, so knowing we're a little behind here, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, the colonization of Africa. Um, Africa was recognized as just a colonial interest of the great powers in um, Anglo-Saxon um, Europe. And so they parceled the continent out over the years. And that kind of ended at the end of World War I and certainly by the beginning of World War II and thereafter. But so Tanzania, which is uh, a combination of Tanganyika, which is that, that's what it was known by, and there's an island off the coast called Zanzibar. So they combined the two and called it uh, Tanzania when they formed the country. And the capital is in Dodoma, used to be in Dar es Salaam on the coast, but they moved it inland. There's about 120 tribes in Tanzania and with all the different languages and dialects. Swahili is, a, is the recognized uh, language spoken throughout and English and didn't hear much German, but um, certainly English and probably a little bit of French too. But. So there's uh, geological uh, impact by this um, a great rift valley which runs from the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and the Horn of Africa right here. And it runs all the way down through Uganda, Ethiopia, Uganda, and then down through Tanzania. And it ends here at the coast. So this is a highly volcanic area. There's full of, it's full of volcanoes. Um, and uh, lakes, and there's a wide variety of, of uh, animals, um, birds and mammals, and, and um, eventually in maybe 20 million years, this will break off, and this is what it'll look like. So Madagascar will be moved out a little bit, and this will be a new piece, be a new landmass. This is what it will look like eventually. So Tanzania is, has some wonderful parks, and uh, the area that we concentrated in was up in the north, in the Serengeti, and then Gorogoro Crater, and around Arusha. Uh, there's another uh, Tarangiri National Park. There's another area called Ndudu. Uh, but they also have this huge park that was recently created, the Salu, down here. And then around Lake Tanganyika, there are some beautiful parks. Um, but Lake Victoria uh, is uh, probably the largest lake in the area and then Lake Tanganyika, and then uh, Lake uh, Malawi. Here's another map of uh, the game preserves. So again, we were up in the Serengeti in January. It was not, it was pretty green then, and there were some standing water, but for the most part, the savanna was, uh, was good to go out and drive in and uh, uh, there wasn't much rain. We had a great time. It's a great time to go in January, February because the animals are, uh, are dropping their young. And uh, so, uh, you know, both birds and mammals. 
and there's a lot of uh, color too uh, with uh, flowers and everything. So uh, here's uh, Lake Kilim or, uh, Kilimanjaro National Park, uh, Ngorogoro Crater right here, Tarangiri, and uh, they have the, the great animal drive runs runs this way. So here's your, your animals are moving all the time, mostly, uh, you know, zebras, uh, the ungulates, uh, the uh, 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 wildebeest. And so they're running uh, clockwise all year round. These are some of the people that can still be found. This is a Hadza from the Hadza tribe. They're located down oh, towards Lake Tanganyika. This is another Hadza hunter. These are Messiah warriors. They always are known for their, they have their spears and they have their tartan um, cloaks that they wear. Very proud people. And uh, they're located generally up in the north in the Serengeti. You see them a lot. And this is a Chaga, Chaga tribe. So getting into the birds. This is. <laughs> so the ostrich is uh, the largest. Uh, well, in the taxonomic order, this is the oldest bird uh, in Africa, and um, it's also the largest bird. They stand almost 10 feet tall, and uh, they're flightless, and they have very large eyes, so they have very keen eyesight, so they can look out across the savanna and see what's coming from a long ways away. Their eyes are probably the size of our eyes. Um, there, um, there was a, there was an old wives tale about them, uh, putting their head in the sand, you know, when they're trying to, uh, avoid humanity or a predator. And, uh, that's not true. They just are able to lie flat on the ground and they, um, look like, uh, basically a lump, <laughs> a lump of, uh, sand when they're lying on the ground. They travel in troops of uh, up to 60 individuals. So there seems to be uh, this type of animal in uh, not only uh, Africa, but also in South America, which is called the Greater Rhea. This is in Brazil. And they also have uh, an animal like this in Australia called the emu. Um, it's not uncommon to see an egret. They call this either the black egret or the black heron, but they have a, uh, an interesting mannerism and they, uh, they call this canopy feeding where they create a canopy and they, it attracts fish. And uh, so they see the fish and they uh, snap up the fish. So it's very interesting to see these. Uh, they take a few steps and they create this canopy. It's really kind of neat. Uh, they also have these birds called uh, the hammer cop. And I'm not sure what's going on here. You pressed it too hard. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a very interesting bird. Uh, you find them along the waterways. Uh, they're fisher people. They're, they uh, go after fish for the most part. And um, what's interesting about them is that they create these huge nests. They're compulsive nest builders. They can build up to three to five nests a year. It takes uh, anywhere from uh, two to three weeks to build a nest and they're absolutely immense. 
Um, they're so big that uh, other animals use them too. They, they create cavities in the bottom of the nest and use that as well. They have a, a funny thing called a false mounting. So we don't know if they're actually mounting, but they, they're compulsive about mounting. So interesting birds. Uh, the way they got their name, Hammer, was, uh, I think it was the Dutch, uh, noted that their, their head looks like a hammer. So that's, so the, uh, the white storks come in to, uh, hello? The white storks come in uh, uh, from Europe in uh, uh, January, February, and they just uh, come down to uh, raise their young and then they uh, make the trek back up to Europe. These are interesting birds of saddle billed stork. They're absolutely huge. I don't know. Somebody's not muted, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, uh, they're very, very colorful, very huge, and uh, there's no uh, sexual dimorphism between the two. So, um, but it's very interesting the way they're resting, they're resting on their knees and their feet go forward. So they have something called a marabou stork, which are generally carrion feeders. You see them uh, around uh, kills out in the savanna. And uh, it's interesting, their necks are, are bare because oftentimes you see their head all the way up into the cavity. So if they had um, you know, featheration, it would be a mess. So this way is, uh, they have these long beaks and once the, once the uh, animals opened up and they have uh, an opportunity to get into uh, uh, the kill, then they'll see if they can get a few morsels. South America has a bird very similar to that called the Jabiru. And uh, they're more fisher, fisher people. So they go out and uh, fish and then they take these uh, these fish back up to their nests, which are high in the tree, but very similar uh, ways of making a living. Uh, greater flamingo, uh, these are uh, filter feeders. You can tell by the by their uh, their flat beak. Lesser flamingo, very colorful. Very, very colorful birds. And they're found throughout Africa. Egyptian goose. Uh, Varroa's eagle owl. These are uh, apex predators. Um, they're not afraid of anything. They're, at, they're really, really big uh, birds. And they, uh, they have these uh, beautiful little eyelids, which are pink. Um, but uh, they go out and they'll bring in snakes, they'll bring in uh, just about anything, birds, uh, lizards. They're, like I said, they're just not afraid of much of anything. The black wing kites are very similar to, uh, my controls are. You have to just do it right. Yeah. Black wing kite is, um, uh, very similar to our white, white tail kites out here, only there's a black portion of their wing. They have another bird called the secretary bird, which is uh, basically an, an eagle of the savanna. Uh, they've got uh, ornamentation on the top of their head and they have a, a way of, of killing things, which is basically to run them down and to stomp on them. It's like they're wearing a tuxedo. There's a, 
there's a bird in, uh, in uh, South America, in Brazil, called the red-legged Sariema. Uh, <coughs> very similar to, you know, I call this almost convergent uh, evolution because they do almost the same things. They're basically an eagle of the, of the savanna in Brazil. And the way they kill is that they will run the animal down and they'll take it, whatever it is, a snake or anything. They're just not afraid of really anything. And they'll, they shake it until, and, and hit it against a rock until it's dead. Very interesting ornamentation. Okay, these are, uh, these are the, uh, the largest uh, vultures um, in, uh, in Africa, the lappet face vulture or the Nubian vulture. And you can tell that they are just, they're immense. And they fly in, they fly into a kill. And um, there's quite a bit of activity. There's a lot of, you know, there's uh, uh, hyenas uh, around. There's uh, probably four different types of uh, vultures uh, milling about, opening up the carcass. And then these guys come in and they're noticeably bigger almost double the size of anything else there. And they kind of wait, they wait around. And then when they come in, everybody else kind of gets out of the way. And they, what's, what's, what they're very effective at is to, is to tear through sinew and, um, you know, hard to get at areas. Uh, so this is a, this is a uh, ungulate that was just freshly killed that we, out of the Serengeti. So you can tell they're very, very strong animals. So they can take up to three pounds of meat in their crop. So it's pretty immense. A uh, pallet harrier, again, uh, they hover and then they go for uh, small animals on the ground, mostly mice. This is Eastern Chanting Gossock. Another beautiful savanna bird. And an auger buzzard. What these birds do is a lot of they um, a lot of them will just uh, position themselves in these, uh, you know, thorn bushes, these acacias and uh, other small trees and they wait for prey to uh, come in and they go for it. This is called a brown snake eagle and it's for a good reason. They go after snakes. Um, they've been known to go after the black mamba, nine foot long black mambas, uh, which are one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. And they have an inter interesting way of bringing it to the nest. Uh, what they'll do is they'll um, grab the head, take the head off, and you can see by their legs, they, um, yeah, if a snake tries to bite them, it's very difficult for the, uh, the fangs to penetrate these legs. So what they do is they take the head off and then they, they, uh, eat, they, they take the animal in and they leave the tail dangling and they will take it up to the nest and to the female and the female will pull out the snake and uh, tear it up and feed it to the young. It's an interesting way of... So Tawny Eagle, we're just getting into the really large uh, more apex type predators, they, uh, they'll they eat uh, the very varied diet, snakes, lizards, rodents, birds, fish and turtles, and monkeys. Another, another shot of the tiny eagle, beautiful markings. This is called a battler eagle, and uh, a very 
colorful. It has a, a face where the the uh, this the uh, there's no featheration. You have this um, distinctive red uh, beak area. They have an interesting way of uh, getting rid of uh, parasites. They have they what they do is they something called praying. So they get on the ground and they spread their wings and uh, they attract ants uh, to get up into their feathers. And uh, when they feel like it's been enough, they shake their feathers and the ants get upset. They release formic acid and that further kills uh, parasites. So yeah, pretty clever. And that's a, a juvenile. That allure. Uh, this is called a, a long crested eagle. Um, just there just is a long list of uh, incredible raptors there. Practically all of them are endangered, as as so many of the of the wildlife in Africa is. It's just uh, you know humans are encroaching on, and what they do is they bait the. Uh, they bait kill, you know, with uh, pesticides. So, you know, little by little, it's uh, having a big impact on these beautiful um, raptors. This is the top of the top of the predator heap. Um, they have uh, eyesight where they can see up to three miles away. Um, it's called a Marshall Eagle. And uh, these, uh, these guys are just uh, immense. They're, they look strong there. We're dealing with something in the range of like a, a harpy eagle. Not quite as big, but very close to that. And uh, they're not afraid of anything they go after. There's nothing they won't go after. So this is a, uh, a juvenile art, a Marshall Eagle. Quite a difference. Um, they've got um, uh, greater kestrels. They have greater and lesser kestrels. They're quite a bit different, quite a bit as far as size goes. Um, but again, uh, the greater kestrels, they tend to hang out in thorn trees. And uh, when they see their favorite prey, which is uh, generally snakes, lizards, um, uh, mice, then they drop down and uh, bring it back to, the, to their perch. Very pretty birds. And this is the smallest falcon. I think it's the smallest falcon in the world. It's uh, eight inches long. And uh, they're, they're basically an insectivore, although they will take uh, you know, lizards and uh, small snakes, but they're basically uh, going after you know, insects, large insects, like dragonflies and so forth. Helmet of guinea fowl, these are found all over Africa. And um, it's not uncommon for a Marshall Eagle to, to uh, take one of these guys out. Or the large cats will also take them out. They're usually found in uh, large groups for protection, but they're quite a beautiful bird. Gray-breasted Franklin, again, just a you know, very strikingly beautiful bird you know, on the, on the savanna. Redneck spur fowl. And then an African jacana, very similar to, um, to the neotropical uh, wattle jacana. It doesn't have a wattle though, but they do an interesting, um, uh, mating characteristic. They, uh, the females are larger than the males and they, uh, uh, 
they they uh, they gather several males and they mate with the males and they protect the males and feed the males and the males are on the nests so it's a, it's an interesting way of, uh, <laughs> of uh, reverse. yeah reverse uh, they call it polyandry you know where the males sit on the nests and uh, the female So this is the wattle jacana. Gray crown crane, these are found uh, all over East, East Africa, down into South Africa. You know, beautiful ornamentation, basically a ground bird, although they, they will fly up into trees for protection. Uh, Cory Bustard is the, that's it. These are huge birds, and they're the, the largest um, flying bird in not only Africa, but it could be the world. But it's immense. And this is a display by the male. So he saw us, you know, in the truck, and he, um, this, is, this is how they display the tail comes up. The uh, neck gets ruffled and he struts. Very beautiful bird, actually. Uh, white bellied bustard, another uh, savanna bird. Heart lobs bustard. And they also have a beautiful little avocet. Very similar to ours. Now, spotted thick knee. And a double banded courser. These are all birds that are found around lakes and streams. Quite beautiful, double banded and a three banded. And they have their share of lap wings there. I know that we have a, a southern lap wing in this uh, hemisphere, but they have their blacksmith lap wing, a spur winged lap wing, and a crown lap wing. And they have a black faced sand grouse. Oh, this is the male and female. Very pretty markings. And they have an emerald spotted wood dove, you know, perched up in the thorn tree. And a laughing dove. <laughs> Having trouble with my cursor. Well, it's your fingers. You just got to be yeah. gentle. The Fisher's lovebird is uh, there. Uh, they tend to be very social and uh, they mate for life. And uh, they, they're just uh, one of the most colorful, beautiful little birds uh, out there in the, in the savannah. And this is a yellow collared lovebird, you know, very beautiful little parrots. White belly go away bird. Um, this is a family called Taraco. Most of the Taracos, which are found in Africa and Southeast or, uh, India, most of them are, um, you know, bright green or blue. It's just the uh, these go away birds and the plantain eaters are uh, a little bit more drab. Um, but uh, the Taracos are one of my favorite birds over in Africa. This is a bare face go away bird. And the reason they call these go away birds is that when you see it, they just go away. <laughs> you don't see them for long. They just go away. <laughs> so, um, 
they have their share of different cuckoos. This is a Diderot cuckoo. It has a you know beautiful green iridescence. And this is a white-browed cuckoo. You'll see uh, quite a bit, and these are fairly common. But I, I like the way it spreads its tail feathers and, and it's looking back. So this is uh, something similar. It's a similar uh, cuckoo, but it's found in uh, Sulawesi out in Indonesia. Same, uh, they make their living the same way and uh, very, very colorful. It, uh, these mouse birds are uh, uh, similar to a cuckoo. Uh, the reason they call them mouse birds is because they uh, they flit around in the, in the bushes. And you, it's very unusual to be able to get them sitting still for very long. They're very pretty. Blue nape mouse bird. And then they have uh, their share of kingfishers. Now, this one is called the striped kingfisher. And it's a forest kingfisher. You don't find them along the water. And uh, woodland kingfisher, you do find this around the water. And this one, the malachite kingfisher, is like a little jewel. He's, uh, we found him along the water, along Lake Manyara. And you can see his back is just uh, exquisite. These are tiny. Then you get into the bee eaters, and uh, they're very proficient at, uh, you know, grabbing bees, you know, out on the wing. And there's one that just caught, caught one, the cinnamon-chested bee eater, blue-cheek bee eater. European bee eater. And this is uh, still found a little bit up in Europe, but uh, you know, mainly it's, uh, it's come down into Africa now. But you do find a few up in Europe. Uh, the lilac breasted roller, uh, these are just crazy colorful birds. Um, again, they, they perch. Um, um, in uh, acacia trees, and uh, when they see something they like, they uh, they uh, leap down, grab it, and take it back to their perch and eat it. Lizards, uh, snakes, um, mice. And that's a, a back shot of it. They also have a European roller. Uh, these are found less and less up in Europe and uh, and uh, Central Asia. They're found uh, more and more in the parks in uh, in Africa. Not quite as colorful as the lilac, but still quite beautiful. You have something unusual called an African hoopoe. And they use that long beak to, uh, to skewer uh, insects in the ground. They're really proficient at that. So you find them uh, on the ground generally. And you can see there's a little bit of dirt on the end of this beak. But that's what they're really good at, little chopsticks. And they have this incredible top knot. Uh, hornbills are found throughout. Um, they're very similar to um, a bird that we have in the neotropics called uh, toucan, toucanets, aracaris. Same kind of beak, same kind of way of making a living. This one uh, uh, just basically dismantled uh, step by step a, um, a scarab beetle. Yeah, a huge beetle, and I just kind of followed him around. <laughs> See, uh, smashed it and ate it. Silvery cheeked hornbill. And this is the male, you know, with a large cast on top of its beak. 
in the southern southern ground hornbill. Very large bird, usually found on the ground. So you can see that there's quite a bit of um, uh, similarities between the uh, the toucans and the hornbills. Different continents or different hemispheres. Uh, and then they have their share of barbets there too. Barbets are found um, in the Neotropics and uh, Africa. They're found in India. They have a great range and they're usually quite colorful. This is a Darnose barbet. This is a Usambiro barbet. Another Usambiro barbet with a uh, you know a beautiful spider, just showing off. And this is uh, the uh, red and yellow barbet, which is um, very famous throughout Eastern Africa. So you can see the this uh, gilded barbet is from uh, uh, well, this is found in Ecuador and elsewhere. But you can see that the similarities, the color, the beak, red-headed barbet in Costa Rica. This is a scarlet crown barbet found in Ecuador. Toucan barbet. So you can see the barbets are all very similar. They have these large beaks. They, they have the, um, the hair around the beak, you know, facing forward. This is a fire tufted barbets. You know, so this was in Malaysia. So they're just quite a family of birds and they're generally very colorful and usually extremely hungry. Wherever, <laughs> I, wherever I've seen them, they just, all they want to do is eat. Nubian woodpecker. Woodpeckers are some of my favorite birds. They're very active, usually very colorful. This is a Nubian uh, female. This is an African gray woodpecker. And um, African gray looking for the, ne uh, the nest cavity. And there's the male cleaning out the cavity. So uh, what would the Serengeti be without a rufous snake lark? And these larks, this is, they love to sing. This is what you, you hear these all the time and they usually have their head up in the air and they're, they're just singing away. It's a wonderful sound. Uh, rosy throated long claw. And a gray breasted Franklin loves to sing too. This is endemic to uh, Tanzania. Kind of drab, northern anteater chat. I had never heard of one before, but uh, there you go. And uh, this is an African stone chat. You know, pretty little, very active bird. Uh, a capped weed ear. and uh, white-browed scrub robin. Yeah, and these birds are generally on the ground. Uh, they go for uh, you know, termites, uh, uh, seeds, uh, lizards, whatever they can find. Um, African dusky flycatcher. They usually get um, you know, insects on the wing. Uh, chin spot baddus. This is the female, I think. No, this is the male. Again, they're a fly catcher, so they, uh, they leap off, go grab something on the wing, and they come back to the same spot. This is the female, which I think is prettier than the male. So this is a silver bird, and um, there's really nothing else like it. Just a beautiful little bird that it's a, it's a type of flycatcher. 
It's a pretty song, usually solitary. So then we get into uh, birds that are very similar to our hummingbirds. Uh, they're nectar feeders called the uh, sunbird. This is a, called a beautiful sunbird, but they tend to be extremely iridescent and uh, absolutely gorgeous. I haven't seen a sunbird that I haven't loved. I've seen them all over Africa, Malaysia, Indonesia. This is a variable sunbird. And this is an amethyst sunbird. And this is a golden wing sunbird. So the list goes on and on and on. There are just, there are many different sunbirds. And you can see that it's, you know, so not to be outdone, we have our gorgeous hummingbirds in the Neotropics, you know, the festive coquette out in um, the Atlantic region, the uh, purple throated mountain gem. Rainbow star frontlet. So very, very similar. So, and then, we're, then we get into the, um, the fiscals, um, which are a, um, a shrike like bird, uh, like a bush shrike. And they sit up in the, in the trees, the bush, you know, wait for prey down below, they grab it. They come back up to their perch, which is usually in a thorn tree like this. And then they stick their prey onto a thorn. They're otherwise known as a butcher bird because they'll stick their prey on, a, on, on the thorn and then they uh, will get to it at their leisure. Is a baleen shrike. They're a red back shrike. Lots of these shrikes, you know, Southern fiscal. And this is called a Burbru, a very interesting name. But again, it's a type of bush shrike. You can tell by the uh, beak. And, um, you know, what would Africa be without its oxpeckers? And so there's yellow-billed oxpeckers and there's red-billed oxpeckers. So what they like to do is, uh, you know, pick lice and other parasites off, off of, uh, you know, larger animals, the fur of larger animals, but they also tend to open up scabs or they open up small areas of skin and um, suck blood. So that's one of their main sources of uh, food is uh, blood. So the starlings uh, in Africa are just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they've got these colors that are created by these melanosomes. And um, there are these blue, just iridescent blues that just knock your socks off and uh, superb starling. Um, they think that the, the bright, crazy colors of the starlings are a way to show mates, potential mates uh, of their virility. And uh, so the more striking they are, the better they are to, to uh, mate with. But superb starlings are found all over. I would say they're probably least endangered. Um, this is a Hildebrandt starling. So again, you can see the coloration is just wild. Except when you get to a wattled starling. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> so you have a wattle, a little bit of, uh, you know, bare yellow skin and, uh, and everything else is pretty drab, but uh, they do make a good living and, uh, you know, they, uh, they're very social. Now we get into the weaver birds and the weaver birds are very curious um, birds because they, they're very communal. They tend to make these nests that are uh, combined and uh, they can go, they can uh, up to 200 birds 
in one colony, connected colony. And they tend to be um, this golden color, you know, with uh, a lot of them have a, a blackish face. This is a female, lesser mask with a uh, caterpillar. This is a speaks weaver. This is a bagla. There's something wrong with my uh, bagla effect weaver singing. And the vitiline weaver is a whole bush full of them. These are my favorite just because they made these exquisite orbs, you know, for a nest. And they, they weave the, the grass and they come up with these incredible hanging, um, yeah, they're a museum piece, really. Here's another vitiline weaver and a golden backed weaver. So the males do all the work. They make the nest and then they call in the female and if uh, the gets female buy-in, then they're good to go. But uh, sometimes the female just uh, doesn't like what she sees and, and uh, says, no, make me another. <laughs> so, um, White-headed buffalo weaver. Again, the same, uh, they make their way kind of the same way. Uh, these are uh, found all over. And a red-billed buffalo weaver. This is a red-billed quailia. And um, farmers don't much like them. Uh, they tend to, I guess, Australia has the same problem with some of their, uh, some of their uh, uh, parakeets. They'll eat anything and they travel in huge flocks. And so they'll just decimate um, grain field. They're a beautiful little bird though. Uh, white wing widow bird, seed eater, and a fantailed widow bird. Uh, again, you can see a seed eater. And then a southern red bishop, you know, similar to the one that uh, they escaped exotic that we had up here in the Bay Area. Um, and then a, uh, another little seed eater called the blue capped cordon blue, one of my favorites. And then this is the, this is the prize, a purple grenadier. So, what? Steve? Hello, Steve. Yeah. Um, we're kind of gone over, so what do you think? Uh, there's some mammals, but we can skip those. What do you think? Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. I was just going to talk a little bit about Angorogoro Crater. And, uh, and, you know, we could, we could cut it off there and ask for questions, I guess. I... I had some more material, but you know, there's only so much time. Okay. I just, I just wanted to tell people that this is the way that we stayed at uh, this particular lodge. This, um, the Angorogoro Serena Safari Lodge, and so in the early in the morning we took this road, and this is the road that you take to get down. This is the the rim of the crater. So this was a this was a huge uh, volcanic event that happened uh, upwards of two, three million years ago, and this mountain was almost nineteen thousand feet tall, and it completely blew and it cratered it. So there's a concavity at the base, and they're kind of steep walls, um, but you find it's uh, uh, about a hundred square miles. 100 square miles of area in this crater. And then there's a large lake called Lake Magadi. And um, so the road takes you around the lake. So this is the way we went and then back out.
So you find just about every savanna animal in, in Gora Gora Crater, except for giraffes, because giraffes cannot navigate the steep sides of the crater. But it's the largest concentration of lions. There's a, a prides numbering uh, 60 individuals uh, found, lots of ungulates, uh, you know, Cape buffaloes, um, you know, hippos. Um, it's just a, an amazing, you know, lots of, uh, in the water you'll, you'll see flamingos. It just is a wonderful backdrop. Um, definitely a place if you ever get a chance to go there, you really want to see that. So this is what it looks like. So we went down this wall and then we drove around this lake that way. So this is after rain, so there's a little rainbow there, but you can see how immense this area is. So what do you think, Steve? Keep yeah, going or? Steve? So you want to take some questions now? What do you, do you think we should keep going or do you think, because uh, we're, we're kind of, I mean, I'll, I'll keep talking if people are interested. There's a few mammals that I just wanted to go over a little bit. But. Okay. So I, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the zebra and um, pretty common animal and, you know, part of these large herds along with uh, wildebeest that uh, they're the famous ones that go across uh, the Mara, Mara River. And anyway, I just, does anybody have an idea what the stripes are for? Well, I did a little digging and the latest and greatest idea is that they, um, because they don't have real thick skin, real thick hide. They think that it confuses the horse flies, you know, this sort of pattern. And so the horse flies uh, generally don't, don't alight on, on, on this pattern, it confuses them. So that's kind of new, new information. And there's your wildebeest, always with the beard. And uh, there's the omnipresent uh, red-billed oxpecker. They're very, um, very social. They watch out for each other. They're, uh, they're really fun to be around. A little young one, probably less than two weeks old. And then uh, Kirk's Dick Dick. And it's interesting that Dick Dick has a, um, has a gland and, and other ungulates have this too. They have a gland that secretes um, a, um, an attractant and they, uh, they rub that on, on bushes and so forth. But you know, the dick dicks are highly prized. They're predated on by uh, even the martial eagles will take out a dick dick. And impalas are, uh, are found throughout and they're uh, Thompson's gazelle. You find these out on the savannah in large groups and the big cats will really gravitate towards these. This is a East African Defasa water buck. These are found in, uh, we found these in the Angorogoro crater. These are my favorite just because of the coloration uh, called topi. You know, beautiful copper color. And uh, the Alans are the only, I believe it's the only ungulate that was domesticated. So they're highly endangered uh, because they, they're looked upon as bushmeat, you know, by the locals and by the oxpeckers, as you can see. <laughs> so these are uh, um, giraffes that are uh, called as necking. It's um, 
they're actually fighting. And Afri this is a sad story about the elephants in Africa. They're <clears throat> back in the, in the 70s, uh, there were 1.3 million. And as of 2012, they maybe have uh, uh, less than a third of that number. So they're, they're uh, predated upon mostly by, uh, by humans, you know, for the ivory. This has been going on for eons. It's just, it's just been industrial killing though of late. So I, I, I don't know what's happened, you know, during the pandemic and the fact that, uh, you know, tourist dollars haven't been able to come in to, you know, support uh, the rangers, uh, protect, uh, the animals in the parks. So we'll find out. They're very close, tight, tight knit. Uh, it's a mat maternal, uh, uh, matriarchal uh, society, the elephants. And, uh, but the large ones will come after you. And this one didn't like us that much. And uh, he let us know. So we got kind of close. <laughs> so we had to back out quickly. Rock hyrax are uh, highly prized by, uh, by some of the uh, larger birds and um, uh, other, uh, other cats. Uh, dwindling lack of black rhinos. This is one in, in Agorogoro. Look kind of lonely out there, except he did, did have some friends uh, for the ride, yellow-billed uh, oxpeckers. And then the, uh, we were very close to, um, to the hippopotamus, uh, a couple places that we stayed. In the evening, uh, they yawn like this and it's a, it's a type of display. So they uh, put their head up out of the water and then they open up as wide as they can to each other. <laughs> This is the most dangerous animal in Africa, you know, for humans. And those, uh, those canines are, are there to uh, basically just uh, sever uh, canoes, bodies, you know, anything that gets in the way. And uh, at night, uh, they come out of the water and graze. They're vegetarians. So this is uh, Lake Magada, Magadu, and uh, so we got three lions, three males that are being chased by uh, Cape Buffalo. But in the background, you got uh, just an endless number of uh, of uh, lesser flamingos, and he he was headed straight for us. I suspect that these guys uh, are used to uh, uh, carloads of. Uh, of uh, humans. They climb trees mainly to, it's probably a little uh, quieter up there, a little cooler, and uh, not as many insects. So this is a collared female that as we were leaving our, our camp at Ndudu one morning, she had just made a kill and was dragging us across, dragging the zebra across the road. She has a tracking collar on. So the leopards are found throughout their uh, top apex predator. They're very, very good climbers. They uh, can leap 10 feet uh, and they'll go after monkeys. They'll go after uh, mungulates. They take, they uh, generally will pull their prey up into the tree so I wanted to show you a jaguar and uh, the, the rosettes, the pattern on the back of the leopard is somewhat similar to the jaguar, but the rosettes on the jaguar are larger and they also have little uh, uh, black spots. 
within the rosette. Cheetahs, um, does anybody know why they have that? They're very, um, they're very close, very social creatures. And uh, their body is almost dog-like. You know, long legs, you know, big chests. Uh, they, can, they can run up to 70 miles an hour. They've been clocked at 70 for short distances. So they can run just about anything down even a hair. So you can see the, uh, the lines that come down uh, assist them in, in uh, spotting and triangulating uh, prey out on the horizon. So they use that and it, it does a very good job of uh, helping them focus. Serval cats are found uh, in the savannah. You don't see them always, but uh, they're around. I was lucky enough to get one. Bat-eared fox, they have these huge ears. They use those ears for thermal regulation, not necessarily for hearing. Um, and uh, that one was just protecting a den. There was a, a jackal very close to, to that. And he was just protecting his, uh, his uh, offspring, golden jackal. They pretty much do the same thing uh, out on the savannah as our coyotes do. They're uh, opportunists. A spotted hyena, or one of the one of the most uh, fierce predators out there, will run down just about anything. And uh, their jaws are so powerful that it'll crush through any bone. They're not afraid of anything. Look at the neck. A few monkeys. And um, I'll leave it with the dwarf mongoose kind of alerting everybody. There's a, there's a martial eagle in the air somewhere and he's worried. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed it.